The Fusion GPS mess just keeps getting messy. New court filings show that the opposition research firm that the Hillary Clinton campaign and Democratic National Committee hired to dig up dirt on Donald Trump also paid at least three journalists. For what? Was it part of a Democratic plan to spread fake news about Trump? It may be that people are becoming jaded about the news emerging on Fusion GPS. But, increasingly, it appears to be the nexus of a massive campaign by Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party for a post-election investigation into Trump's supposed ties to Russian officials. Now come two stunning revelations that only make the Fusion GPS picture sleazier, if that's possible. The Washington Examiner reports that Fusion GPS paid three journalists between June 2016 and February 2017. It came in an affidavit filed by Fusion GPS co-founder Peter Fritsch, who noted that the House Intelligence Committee had sought information related to transactions between Fusion GPS and certain journalists. Fritsch asserted that the payments in question are not pertinent to work related to Russia or Donald Trump. Sounds clear-cut. But the examiner's Todd Shepard notes that one of the documents filed by lawyers for the House Intelligence Committee said each of the three reporters who received payments had written about the Russia probe, which could indicate that reporters were using Fusion GPS's work to write their stories. That would seriously undermine Fritch's assertion. Moreover, in another filing, the lawyers maintained that Fusion GPS brokered meetings for Trump. Dossier author Christopher Steele with at least five major media outlets in September 2016, including Yahoo News. Did Fusion GPS intentionally mislead Congress? It seems like a real possibility. Meanwhile, as has previously been reported, neither the FBI nor the Justice Department have been able to verify or corroborate the allegations of collusion between Russia and Trump that came from the Trump dossier. More and more, it looks like a giant setup, intended to trap then-candidate Donald Trump into implicating himself in a plot to undermine the U.S. election. But it was Clinton and her bot and paid for lackeys in the DNC who were in fact colluding with Russian officials. We promised a second revelation, so here it is, Daily Caller investigative reporter Chuck Ross reports that the U.S. law firm Baker Hostetler paid Fusion GPS $523,651 from March 2016 to October 2016 to investigate Bill Browder, a London-based banker who was behind the passage of the Magnitsky Act, a set of U.S. sanctions that the Russian government strongly opposed. And who paid Baker Hostetler to make that payment to Fusion GPS? Russian businessman Denis Katsev, through his company, Prevezin Holdings. Indeed, it turns out that Fusion founding partner and former Wall Street Journal reporter Glenn Simpson compiled the information for Katsev. This is yet another Russian link to Fusion GPS. The man whom Fusion paid to concoct the Trump dossier, former British spy Christopher Steele, interviewed a number of Russian officials for his Trump research, and was paid $168,000 for his work by Fusion. The picture emerges of Fusion, the Democrats, and the Russians colluding to eliminate a wildcard politician that could be trouble for all of them. Moreover, in a separate transaction, the Seattle-based law firm Perkins Coy paid out some $1,024, 408 between May 2016 and the end of that year, the records show. The biggest check was $365,275 made on October 28, 2016, just days before the election. And who was Perkins Coy? The attorneys for both the Clinton campaign and the DNC. Again, the point is, the fingerprints of Hillary Clinton, the Democratic Party and Russian officials are all over the infamous Trump dossier. But, as of yet, there has been no actionable evidence of actual ties between the Trump campaign and Russia. More and more, as we said, this looks like a classic setup a rather clumsy one, until you consider that Hillary Clinton and the Democrats were pretty sure she was going to win. All of this would have simply been swept under the rug by deep state bureaucrats in the Justice Department and at the FBI on behalf of President Hillary Clinton. Based on this, We'll reverse the logic that the left has employed against Trump now for well over a year, if it turns out that the Clinton campaign and DNC not only funded Fusion GPS but also directly or indirectly colluded with Russian officials to subvert an American presidential election, they will be liable for criminal charges and possibly jail time. As for the three journalists we mentioned above, 
If they used this information as the basis of their Russia reporting, it will turn out to be a scandal from which US journalism will have trouble recovering. The media is already held in such low repute by the public that it's hard to think it can go lower. But it can. Meanwhile, Fox News is saying that a top Justice Department official has been demoted. Uh, this seems to follow a familiar drill here, a probe of contacts with the founder of Fusion GPS, the firm behind that Trump dossier, to ACLJ Executive Director Jordan Sekulow. Jordan, what do you make of this? You know, I think this again goes to that point. We do not know enough about what the FBI and the Department of Justice were doing with Fusion GPS. But now if they're starting to demote people, and you have to wonder, you know, the House, the Senate, they all want to know, and I think all the American people want to know how much money, if any money, was exchanged. We know there was a, a contract that was put in place. We don't know if it was ever executed between the FBI, which is overseen by the DOJ, and Fusion GPS to continue work on this uh, so-called dossier. And now we have an official uh, that is being demoted. We've had two officials from the special counsel's teams uh, be demoted, one for sending uh, 10,000 plus texts, some that included anti-Trump uh, text, and that was a top FBI official. He's demoted. Another official there who was, he was having an affair with, also demoted from the special counsel's team. Uh, so it seems like, again, while you've got, I know uh, Director Ray uh, was testifying uh, today, but next week uh, the acting attorney general for this Russia matter, Rod Rosenstein, has got to testify before Congress, and I, I expect a lot of questions on this, Neil. Now, Rosenstein, of course, was the guy who appointed the special prosecutor, Bob right. Mueller, of course, who who fired the, the one who was sending the nasty text about Trump, the separate issue. But I'm always wondering, and you're a very, very good lawyer, I'm not, but I've watched a lot of legal shows, so I think I could count as an expert. That yeah. One of the things I do notice is that you want to leave a trail of suspicion, that is, if you eventually want to appeal or fight uh, a decision that comes down that's not friendly to you, and that in the Trump administration, maybe the suspicion is that Bob Mueller has a bias, the FBI, the investigation itself is biased, and that they can point back to these uh, if it doesn't go their way. What do you think? Well, I think when you actually have officials that are being demoted by Mueller because they are they are sending, they, they are biased, uh, admittedly so. They didn't fight back against that. They were demoted. Two officials now from the special counsel's team have already been demoted. One is being reviewed, and he's a top official. Andrew but, Weissman, but I guess what I'm uh, saying is if Mueller did demote and or fire some of these people, there might yeah. be others, uh, does that prove that he he himself is trying to be very vigilant and fair about this, or or does it taint whatever is going on? I think the more and more people that get involved, Neil, and get demoted, the more it taints, honestly. I think that, you know, after a while, if you start demoting all of your top people, so far these have been top people that have been demoted, then you're tainting your investigation. You're not helping your investigation out, especially when the American people and those who are fighting uh, back on this and trying to learn about this and funding it like Congress aren't learning about it until months later. I mean, that happened in August and we don't learn about it until December. That is absurd. I also think this idea that, you know, these retractions on the Deutsche Bank story, that undermines the investigation of the special counsel when they allow a false report to hang out there for so long that they subpoenaed records for, 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 on Donald Trump that they did not. That they, is that official, by the way, that that never people. happened? The accusation was that Deutsche yes. Bank sometime back had been asked to hand over any records regarding Donald Trump or his associates, uh, so their finances, which is something that uh, the president indicated earlier would be a line crosser there. A red line, right. 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 And now you've got the, the news agencies that reported that. Uh, it was uh, Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg, who broke it initially. They've all retracted that story and said it's associates. The AFP actually said, Neil, which it makes more sense, it was likely the, the subpoena was likely for, uh, in relation to Paul Manafort. And we know his charges had nothing to do with the president of the United States. All right. Uh, yeah, it's not very clear what the position is on that. Uh, Jordan Sekulow. Political reporting in a bombshell expose that the Obama administration placed the DEA's investigation into Hezbollah's drug trafficking and money laundering operations on hold, all to ensure that the Iranian nuclear deal remained on track. Joining us now, Republican Congressman Robert Penninger, uh, who is urging the House to investigate that report in a letter he sent to the Oversight Committee Chairman Trey Gowdy. Congressman, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, this is salacious stuff. It's scary 
uh, that uh, the lengths that perhaps the previous administration went through to get this Iranian deal done? It is, sir. This is an egregious violation of the president's responsibility to protect this country. And uh, that's why I want a full investigation. You have senior officials from Treasury, from Department of Defense, who have spoken out openly with their names, not anonymously, uh, conveying that they were impeded in the process of this investigation. So uh, we must uh, look at this. We, may, we must see, get to the bottom of it and find out exactly what was done. Right. And, you know, the impact of this is extraordinary. Uh, Hezbollah is responsible for transporting a billion dollars uh, worth of arms and drugs uh, in exchange for cash. Uh, they are a major factor in our war against terror. Right. I just hosted a, a meeting in Buenos Aires just three mm -hmm. weeks ago. Mariano Federici, my uh, partner down there, we had 220 members of parliament and government leaders from 15 countries addressing this very issue, uh, the nexus between uh, the drug cartels and the terrorist organizations. And, and just to bring the audience up to speed, this was a campaign dub project Cassandra launched in 2008 by the DEA after they amassed yes. a whole bunch of evidence that Hezbollah had actually transformed itself, Absolutely. not just from a military and political organization, but into an international drug crime syndicate cartel. Exactly. They were ready for prosecution, and they were impeded uh, through this, in this process, uh, by uh, individuals in the administration. Uh, different people have spoken out to this effect. So I, I think it's critical that we get to the bottom of it. Even, frankly, I do believe that the attorney general needs to be fully engaged. I think the most shocking uh, line, one of the more shocking lines from this article, is that the Obama administration threw an increasing, increasingly insurmountable series of roadblocks in the way. Now, I think one of the questions will be, was that perhaps, if this is true, to appease Iran or at, or at the request uh, and demands of Iran? You don't know. We need to get to the bottom of it. Uh, many people were involved uh, in this article, and dozens of people were interviewed. A number of them are named personally. This is well-researched, uh, real, well-sourced uh, document. And I think we do need to understand exactly how it unfolded, because clearly uh, this was done to help process a very misguided uh, agreement with Iran. Every uh, one of our friends in, in the Gulf states has, has said to me, that it was a poorly constructed deal. Right. In fact, one of them said, sir, if we, it's like if we went to Moscow, we negotiated an agreement with Ukraine without talking to Europe. Uh, we know Iran. If you don't, we do. All right. Congressman Robert Pettigrew, thank you very much for your time and, and your diligence on this. And obviously, we'll bring you back soon to get an update. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir.